Okay, so the next step in the fabrication of custom trays is to apply a light cure resin in order to fabricate the tray. And we're gonna shape it, we're gonna adapt it, and eventually the trays will look like something like this. This is the resin that comes in a box. If you notice the box is it's got a very dark shell to it. And that's because this stuff is very sensitive to light. So if you leave the lid open, over time it could cure. So when you open the box and take the sheet out, please put the cover back on so it remains and has the same properties for the next use. So they have little separating sheets in between them. You can just peel that off. And as you can see, the sheets are very malleable, very flexible. But once they put in the light cure unit, they become very hard, like so. Okay? So before we apply our preformed light cure sheets, what we need to do, as far as the models are concerned, or the casts, we need to ensure that we have um, some kind of separating medium on here. Because the light cure sheets will adhere to the model surface. They will not adhere to the wax. But anything outside the wax coverage will stick to the resin. So you can do a number of things. You can use Vaseline to cover the areas outside your wax, or you can use separating fluid. And we have our SDS sheets in the binder, and I'll post this on Blackboard so you guys can view it at your, at your own time. I would suggest that every time you use the like your sheets or the separating fluid, or Vaseline for that matter, wear some gloves. So I'm going to start applying some separating fluid to the areas outside the wax. And when you're using the separating fluid, it's got a lid on it, just twist it off. When you finish using it, put it back on because this is water-based and if you leave the lid open, the water eventually evaporates and becomes thicker and thicker and thicker and the film that you're applying on top of your model surface takes up space because the fluid becomes thicker. So with a small brush you can wipe off the excess just on the side of the container Give a generous coat of separating fluid on the cast surface, not covered in wax. You can go over to the base here. All the way around. You don't have to go at the bottom of the model. And after you applied the, the fluid, just give it a bit of an air. Spray it with some air so it just dries to the touch. You don't want it to be wet. For the lower model, I'll do the same thing. You wanna make sure that you cover this area in here wipe off a little bit of that and all around the wax relief Be 
because you're gonna use a considerable pressure adapting this material if you don't use the separator it's gonna stick to the model surface and you're gonna have a very difficult time trying to get it off and you're taking a risk either breaking the material or breaking the model so I'm just gonna air dry this one with the air nozzle So these are good to go as far as adapting the like here material. Always a good idea to apply a little bit of Vaseline on your gloves because the material tends to be a little bit tacky and if you put just a little bit of Vaseline on your fingertips you'll be able to apply the material without peeling back off as you're lifting your hand and going to the next section. So I'm going to start with the upper one first. This is the easier one of the two because we have those little tissue stops that we need to fill in. And also the lower one has a bit of a different design in terms of the handle that we're going to apply to this custom tray. And there's three different variations. And I'll show you all three. And depending on the scenario that you're going to be facing with your clients, um, you can decide which one is best. And I'll tell you which one I typically use and the reasons why. So I'm going to take out a piece and I'll center it over the model. And sometimes you might run out of room in terms of covering the whole area that you need to cover. So you can certainly cut off another piece and, and kind of pinch it together to extend it. But we'll see. Hopefully we won't run out of room. So I'll put a little bit of Vaseline, just a little bit there if you can see. And you can see now my gloves are coated with Vaseline, just a very fine layer, that's all you need. And I'm going to start from the vault of the palette here. And you want to make sure that you use even pressure. Use the broad portions of your fingertips or your thumbs to ensure that you don't pinch through the material and decrease the thickness of the material. The thickness of the material from the manufacturer is about two millimeters. And we want to maintain that uniform thickness throughout the custom tray. So I'm going to start out from the palette. I'm using gentle pressure. And I'm rolling the material over towards the peripheries. And I think for the most part, for most cases, you're going to find that you're, you have more than enough material to cover the entire area. So you notice that I'm holding the material here and I'm pinching it together gently. And I can still see the pencil outline where I need to finish this custom tray because if you recall from the previous exercise, I made it very heavy. I scribed it very heavy. So it's visibly recognized through the wax as well as through the tray material. If you smear the material a little bit, it becomes a little glossy. It just gives it a nice shine. Otherwise, it's more like a matte finish. And just by doing that with my fingertip, it becomes very glossy. If you have any fingertips, any fingerprint marks on there, this will take them out. And just ensure that you have the same adaptation everywhere, and if you noticed, I don't have any thin areas. By the fact that I just use the broad portions of my fingertips, 
to adapt the material. So that's, that's, I think that's pretty good. And from this point, you can take your surgical blade and cut the material. It's always a good idea when you're cutting the material to have your Bunsen burner turned on because by heating your blade tip before you cut through the material makes it a little bit easier for that blade to cut through without lifting the material or displacing the material. So I'm just gonna heat my blade a little bit over my Bunsen burner. So as you can see in the other screen here, just heating it a little bit and start wherever it's most noticeable. There, there's no right or wrong where you start and when you finish. But once again, when I cut the material, I got my left arm holding the model anchored to my bench and I got my right arm anchored to my left hand holding the model. And just like we did with a relief wax on the lower cast, you want to make sure that your blade approaches the model at right angle. So I'm just gonna cut off this little piece just to show you what I mean by that. So the material now is cut at right angles to the surface of the cast throughout the periphery. You can just wipe off that. Now, this excess material that you do remove, don't throw it out yet. We'll need it in order to make the handle for the rest of the tray, which is that bit right there. Otherwise, you have to go into a new sheet and cut off material and you'll be wasting material. Depending on which brand you buy, these uh, preformed sheets are anywhere between two to three dollars each. So they can add up over time. If you're not sure where the line is, leave it a little bit longer. We can always go back and trim it shorter if you have to. But I think if you had a very um, heavy pencil outline for the periphery, you can clearly see that. And you can be very precise with your blade and you don't have to do much trimming after. Because trimming is rather noisy and it's dusty. And I'd rather have nice quiet time versus making all that noise. with my motor. When you get to the Freenums, I find it easier to start at the top of the Freenum and make my way down to the periphery. Otherwise, if you go towards the tip of the Freenum, you're gonna be displacing the material. So again, heat up your blade and open up the Freenum. Just like that. Now, if you're a little bit short or a little bit long, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to move that around a little bit and get it really exact so you don't have to do a lot of trimming afterwards. So I'll continue here with, there's another Freenum here. I can barely see it. So I'm not gonna cut it very deep. I'm gonna start off by being short and hopefully by the time I remove some of the material, it becomes, becomes a little more evident if I need to cut some more or not. And luckily, I think I came pretty close. And once again, make sure that you're holding your model so your blade approaches the surface of the cast at right angles to where you want to cut. When you get to the Freenums, start from the top of the Freenum and pull everything down. And gently pull things away. 
So even though with a fresh blade, you still might find that some of the material peels away from the model surface. We really want to have this adapted fairly well. So I'm going to take my number seven spatula and just go back and readapt everything. Around the phenol attachments, as I mentioned earlier, you can contour it either with a tip or the back of the spatula. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. So there's very minimal trimming, if any at all. The only thing I would have to um, consider doing after this is cured, whether you're using your micromotor or your lathe, is to just to round off the periphery because as you're cutting it, you're creating very sharp edges and certainly wouldn't want to put that in the patient's mouth because that could cause harm. So we're going to round those off eventually. Once again, don't forget to heat the tip of your blade. And it's always a good idea to use a fresh blade when you're doing this. Because it minimizes the displacement of the material as you're cutting through it. As you can see, I'm working little sections. Just gonna go back and readapt this. If I feel that I'm a little bit long here, I can pinch the material closer together to that line. And go back to my surgical blade and continue to the next section. So you continuously have to heat up your blade to ensure the blade is hot and it cuts through the material rather easily. Back here I barely made that line but I think it should be, it should be okay. And again the blade, just like we're using a pencil, it's towards me for the most part. cutting it at right angles to the model surface. And the last little bit here. Bring it all together. So this excess material that you see here, I'm gonna pinch that together and I think I might have enough to make the handle. But before I get to that, I'm just gonna give it an overall look Make sure my extensions are correct. Take some care with light pressure and readapt the material. Maybe redefine the freno relief and go back and adjust it with your spatula. So the outline of the frenums that we've that we had before make it a lot easier to identify where we need to finish this custom tray. I think for the most part this is fairly nice. So the next step is to make the handle for the maxillary custom tray. So the leftover pieces that I have here and the little Vaseline residue that's still on my gloves comes into play because it blends the material together, I think a little nicer. So I'm just gonna make a little ball out of this and squeeze things together. So basically I'm doing this. I'm squeezing my fingertips together with the material in between. And I'm gonna make a little rectangle That's approximately 10 millimeters wide by 15 millimeters long and about four millimeters thick. And what I'm going to do next is adapt the material that's going to produce the handle all over the insides of the papilla, centered over the midline and over the crest of the ridge. 
So in order for the material to adapt a little bit better, I like to heat the portion of the handle that I made over the Bunsen burner at the, the edge of the flame, not directly over the flame. So if this was my flame coming out of my Bunsen burner, I'm not gonna hold it up here. I'm gonna hold it just at the edge of the flame, just to soften the material a little bit so it's a little bit easier to adapt it. So I'm gonna do that off camera here. And now, all I gotta make sure is that I'm centered over the midline and centered over the crest of the ridge. It's straight up and down, straight up and down off the ridge. I'm gonna take the back of my number seven spatula. I'm gonna heat that a little bit over my Bunsen burner and I'm gonna burnish that in And notice I'm using the part of the spatula that's a little bit thinner and it creates a nice blending, almost a seamless blending between the handle and the actual base. Now this handle might move around as you're doing this, but we're going to go back and correct it before we cure it. So once again, heat up the instrument and burnish the two parts together so you have a nice appearance and a nice finish. Everything needs to be rounded. Everything needs to be smooth. Granted, clients don't care about custom trays. They're not here to buy custom trays. They're here to buy an upper lower denture. But I think everything is part of the treatment. Everything needs to be presentable. And every time you see your client, you're always building up rapport with your client. And one of the ways to do that is to have something that's presentable, clean, comfortable, and functional, of course. Now, how big do you make your handle? I guess you have to gauge in terms of how big your hand is because you're going to be using this interorally. So if you have smaller hands, you might want to make your, your handles a little bit smaller. If you have bigger hands, of course, you can go a little bit bigger. But keep in mind, you can't make them too big in terms of the height because imagine this in the patient's mouth sitting like so. They have to open their lower jaw in order for us to be able to work with this. So we can't make this handle too long. If I stretch my handle, it won't be as dense as it is right now. And most likely, it'll start falling over and that might happen inside the curing unit. So to make sure nothing moves around, I tend to compress my handle just like so. I just made that part of the handle a little more dense now. It's got a little more mass to it. So it's gonna hold its own weight as it's spinning inside the curing unit. The edges of the handle are rounded. If they're not, we can always round them off with a burr. And a last little look before I'm ready to cure this. I want to make sure that I'm centered in terms of the midline and in terms of the crest of the ridge and everything is nice and rounded with some adequate thickness there. You might have seen the handles have maybe a label incline and they come out like this or they might have a loop type of finish, not for full dentures. If you do that, when you go through your muscle molding, at the labial section here, the handle is going to get in the way. So we want the handle to be centered and we want the handle to pretty much have a straight up and down angle off the crest of the ridge. 
So I'm not gonna cure this now. I think I'm gonna continue with the lower. And we'll cure them together. You can leave this on the side. It doesn't make a difference whether you cure it now or half an hour later. And I'll just continue with the lower. 